Good morning students. This is Dalvinder Pal Singh and I welcome you all once again to e-portal of CIS Dasua. I hope you all are safe at home. We are doing our English reader Bihai and we have completed our first chapter the fun they had. In the last lesson we have done few of the activities based on the chapter. Let's have a quick recap of what activities we have done. Okay my dear students let's recap. In our last lesson I have given you three different activities based on the chapter. My first activity was fact file. In this you have to jot down all the important points and qualities of the schools of 22nd century and then you have to jot down the same points for your school of present era it means in the first one you have to use your understanding skills for the chapter and in the second one you have to use your observational skills for your present school and after collecting all the facts you have to make a comparison between both and find out which era is better for students holistic development and why okay and now the second activity that is story writing I have asked you to imagine yourself as a time traveler when you visit the era when you visit the year 2157 AD the same year which is mentioned in the chapter and you have to find out what type of lifestyle those people have how is it different from our lifestyle and what happened there you have to tell us about all those things you have to create a story based on this okay and now the activity 3 this was uh, simply question and answers you have to answer the questions based on some extracts then you have to give short answers for the questions and finally the value based questions were given to you a worksheet was attached yesterday which you have to complete let us now start with our next topic that is a poem and the name of the poem is the road not taken written by Robert Frost this is really really a very beautiful poem which gives us a very good message at the end whenever you read a poem you should understand that there are four main components associated with the poem which gives us a comprehensive knowledge about it these four components are facts related to poet and the poem then the second one is explanation of the poem which includes its summary theme and the central idea the third is literary analysis this includes rhyming scheme of the poem and the poetic devices used in it fourth is understanding which can be checked with the help of some extracts short question answers and discussions Robert Frost is one of the most widely read and beloved of American poets. 
as well as one of his greatest. Four-time Pulitzer Prize winning poet, Robert Frost was a national celebrity, famous for writing poems about rural life using American colloquial speech. Robert Frost is well known for a few poems that he managed to lodge in everyone's head, Stopping by Woods on a Snowy Evening, also Mending Wall, and The Road Not Taken, of course, is probably the most famous of all of his poems. While most people associate Robert Frost with New England, he was born in San Francisco on March 26, 1874, and he moved to New England at age 11 after the death of his father. Frost began writing poetry in high school, where he met his future wife, Eleanor White. He briefly attended Dartmouth, then went to Harvard in 1897, but left before graduating due to illness and his wife's pregnancy. After Harvard, Frost took up farming. During this time, he lost two children to influenza, and he wasn't a very good farmer. Uh, the farm did not thrive, but his work thrived. While Frost was able to get a few poems published, he was unable to get a book published. So in 1912, he sold his farm and took his family to live in England, hoping to find better luck with publishers. Within a few months of arriving in England, Frost found a publisher for his poems. The first book, A Boy's Will, was reviewed rather quickly by none other than Ezra Pound, who gave it a very favorable review. Shortly after World War I broke out, Frost moved back to the United States and settled in Franconia, New Hampshire, where he wrote and began his long teaching career, starting off at Amherst College. Robert Frost was really the first bard on campus. He taught at various universities, Amherst, Michigan, Harvard, Dartmouth, Middlebury. He moved around a lot. He was in and out of universities, and as he used to call it, barding around. By the end of his career, Robert Frost was showered with honors. He received over 40 honorary degrees. He also received the Congressional Gold Medal and four Pulitzer Prizes. At the age of 86 in 1961, Robert Frost was asked to read at John Fitzgerald Kennedy's inauguration. The land was ours before we were the land. She was our land more than 100 years before we were her people. At the time, it was as much an honor for Kennedy as it was for Frost. Robert Frost died in Boston, Massachusetts at the age of 89 on January 29, 1963. Poetic to the end, Frost's tombstone read, I had a lover's quarrel with the world. When Amherst College built the Robert Frost Library, Kennedy agreed to give the keynote address, and it was one of the great speeches of his presidency. In that speech, Kennedy wrote, when power corrupts, poetry cleanses. He was thinking very much of Robert Frost as a poet who spoke truth to power. Robert Frost felt very strongly about form. He once famously said, free verse is like playing tennis without a net. It ain't tennis. And Frost was tennis all the way. I hope you like the biography. Now let's find out what type of poem is it. It is a narrative poem. Narrative poem means a poem which tells us about some story. It reads naturally or conversationally means some sort of conversation is going out in this poem. It begins as a kind of photographic depiction of a quiet movement in woods. Woods stands for forest. Now let's listen to one of the audio which is related to this poem. Two roads diverged in a yellow wood, and sorry I could not travel both and be one traveler. Long I stood 
and looked down one as far as I could to where it bent in the undergrowth. Then took the other as just as fair and having perhaps the better claim because it was grassy and wanted wear. Though, as for that, the passing there had really worn them about the same. And both that morning equally lay in leaves no step had trodden black. Oh, I kept the first for another day. Yet, knowing how way leads on to way, I doubted if I should ever come back. I shall be telling this with a sigh, somewhere ages and ages hence. Two roads diverged in a wood, and I, I took the one less traveled by. And that has made all the difference. Okay, so how was the poem? I hope you liked it. Now let us do a small work. Take, take your notebook and write down all the difficult words you found in this poem on one side of the page and then find out their meanings and write down opposite to it. Now let us understand the meaning of this poem and understand the meaning of each and every line one by one in this video. The road not taken. Two roads diverged in a yellow wood. And sorry, I could not travel both. And be one traveller, long I stood, And looked down one as far as I could, To where it bent in the undergrowth. In this stanza, the poet says that in a jungle, There were two roads. Both roads go in different directions. As the poet has used the term yellow wood, it seems that the leaves have turned lifeless and yellow, depicting autumn. The poet feels sorry because he, alone, cannot travel on both roads. The roads could symbolize two choices in life and the poet is finding it difficult to make a choice. So, he being a traveler, stood there for a long time, determining which way to continue traveling. As he was thinking, he noticed that one of the roads bent in the trees and shrubs and finally disappeared, then took the other as just as fair and having perhaps the better claim, because it was grassy and wanted wear, though as for that the passing there had warned them really about the same. After seeing that one of the roads disappeared into the undergrowth, the poet decides to take the other road. As just as fair can have multiple meanings. Perhaps the poet wants to say that the road is beautiful as well, or the poet wants to be fair and choose the correct option. Hence, selecting between two roads may portray the selection between two destinies. The poet then describes that maybe this road is better because it has fresh grass grown on it and was not used much. But 
when he started traveling on it he found that travelers have passed through this road just as much as the other in these lines we can observe how the poet quickly goes back to his statement first he says this road is untraveled then as he walks finds it equally traveled also the poet says that the path wanted where a path cannot have a desire or want to where only humans have want thus the poetic device personification is used here in personification a thing an idea or an animal is given human qualities here the path is personified and both that morning equally lay in leaves no step had trodden black oh i kept the first for another day yet knowing how way leads on to way i doubted if i should ever come back here the poet says that both the roads were covered with leaves that morning and perhaps that morning he was the first to travel on that road as the leaves fallen on the road had not turned black by the steps of travelers however it seems that he regrets his decision slightly wondering if he will ever get to come back and take the other road i shall be telling this with a sigh somewhere ages and ages hence two roads diverged in a wood and i i took the one less traveled by and that has made all the difference years from now somewhere in the future the poet feels that he will look back and then decide whether the choice he made was the correct one or not this may be indicating that making a choice out of two objectives is responsible for our future and that makes all the difference the choice may bring us right or wrong he will be telling about his choice with a sigh sigh is releasing a deep breath expressing happiness relief sadness etc so if the choice proves out to be right it will be a sigh of happiness or relief and if the choice is wrong it will be a sigh of disappointment i hope you have understood the poem by now now let us check your understanding i am going to give you a few questions based on the poem two of them are extracts and two of the short answers questions my first question is from the first stanza of the poem and there are three questions associated with it first question at which point had the poet reached the second question why was the traveler feeling sorry and the third question is give the opposite to meet at a point from the extract my second extract is from the stanza starting with and both that going till ever come back and the questions are which road does the poet choose second why was the poet doubtful about the first road third find a word from the extract that means crushed now let us have 
short answer type questions which you have to answer in 30 to 40 words my first question is describe the two roads which road the poet has taken and why my second question is what was the poet's doubt regarding his onward journey this is the end of part one